Welcome to episode 146 of Book Down, the number one Blood Bowl podcast. In all of Middenheim. It's Steve Kilowoggy Campbell, and I'm Scott Prime, and we are here with you to talk about some Blood Bowl. Howdy, Steve. How's it going? I like how we just got done re-recording because you're screaming too much, and then you just immediately go into screaming too much. Oh, that no, that's was okay. me trying to tone it down. Here, I'll talk No, you're fine. Low. Yeah, we can just keep it nice and smooth. Hi, welcome smooth, to relaxing NPR jazz. Blood Bowl. <laughs> NPR Blood Bowl, where we talk God. about... Morgan Nuffle, Dorr, who Nuffle, killed six people. <laughs> Nuffle podcast. Nuffle, Nuffle Public Radio. Do they have radio? I mean, they could. I mean, they do now. Recasters. We got it. Nuffle Trademark, pub- vote down. Nuffle uh, Public Recasters. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Trademark, both down. Yep, we, we got, got it. it. <laughs> uh, life is going okay. Uh, the overtime at work is coming to an end. I'm sure you're happy about that. This is the last week for that. So I'm quite looking forward to overtime at work. That will be very nice. Oh, man. Not us. We're tired of it. So, I mean, forced overtime, volunteer overtime and forced overtime are two different things. That's for damn sure. Yeah, I got, I can't complain about that. Um, but yeah, life overall is going pretty good. That's and, good. And uh, how about yourself in Ohio? Ohio. Uh, going really well. Um, I got my first full paycheck, so that was really nice. Um, got to go to a tournament finally. Was not able to go to able to go to Ohio because I just don't trust my car to make it that far. That's fair because your car gave you fits getting up there. So yeah. anything that's probably... More than an hour away, I'd be scared myself. Yeah, that's the issue I'm running into. It got it gets me to where I need to go. It's probably fine. I might just be worrying too much because it's a four cylinder and we're going up and down hills and I'm not used to it. But I'm not a fan. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> no, I got you. Um, other than that, yeah, everything's going really well. Um, got nothing else to say about that really. Oh, well, that's because um, been playing online. We got. You got the we got the Oklahoma Blood Bowl League online, and you and I played. And we streamed I don't know that. What's it? I don't know what it's officially called. It's the, the Cobble, the League. Jeff Hunt, the Jeff Hunt online league it's or whatever Cobble. for PCs. Yeah, it's the Cobble okay. League. But you and I actually uh, streamed and played a game on there. Haven't we talked about that since? No, we? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Oh, then well, we should talk about that. We, so yeah, we we streamed and played and. Um, some amazing misclicks on my end. And... Maybe we did. Anyways, <laughs> so let's not talk about that anymore. The, that yeah. league's going a lot slower than my other league. My other league, the Houston one, um, we're through week six, and I have five wins and a tie with my Skaven. Holy moly, macaroni, look at you. I know. The last game I went, I played against a Dark Elf team, and after, I think, two turns, he had three of my people gone. I was just like, I'm, and I thought to myself, crap, this is not fun. And then Dean, the head of the thing, posted in, not Dean Piper, Dean, other Dean. Um, mm-hmm. He posted, oh, this is what sucks with the 11s is being two plays in and knowing you lost the game and having to wait two hours to see it. I was like, nah, I'm not going to lose this. I'm going to pull it out. <laughs> and Skaven being Skaven and getting... Three blitzes, I was able to win, I believe, three to nothing or three to one. Dude, I'd been mad as hell if I was yeah. the other guy. Yeah, it was, it was three. so bad. Three. Well, speaking of, yes. I, I can tell you this. So, um, probably already talked about it. I, my Nurgle team played a Black Orc team last month and I w- got, it was like, it was a close game. But, anyways, long story short, I got, my onside kick basically through a blitz, right? I yeah. kicked off to him and then almost caught my own kickoff, but I had the ball surrounded by people. So it made it difficult, you know, when there's five guys there yeah. and the blitz, the blitz, the blitz, the blitz screwed him. And I ended up winning that game, either two to one or one to nothing. I cannot remember against the black orcs. This last game I was playing against Dark Elves, and this guy, we sat down, and he's like, there's no way I'm going to beat you. And I'm like, 
you've had Lodgers, you've got your Dark Elves, I've Nurgle with hardly any skills. Yeah. And he just blitzkrieged me. He just came in running, running and gunning. And of course, I didn't pick up the ball. I wasn't going to waste a reroll. And he just came at me. And he rolled a lot of one die blocks. And he rolled a lot of just pows Jeez. during that time and just popped me in the face. And it was by turn three, it was one to nothing. Um, Dark Elves. Yeah. And I. Tried not to flip the table. <laughs> I got the ball back. I ground it down. I scored on my turn eight. Here we go. We're going into the second half. Maybe I can stop him. Maybe I can wear him down. I, I had him down by a few players, but he hurt one of my bloaters, which I cannot keep healthy to save my life. <laughs> and sure enough, the blitz action happened again. I got five guys there. Tried to catch the kickoff. I didn't catch it, but it didn't matter at that point because I had all my guys there. And um, I ended up winning that game two to one. And it's both been because of blitzes. So you know what? We had a, an itinerary for what this podcast was going to be. But I think I'm going to pull an audible. And in addition to our first segment, we're going to talk about something else. Because the first segment was going to be a little short. So mm. I'll bring it up. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, do we have anything else before we get into the segments? It sounds I, like you want to get to the segment to talk about my response to the blitz actions. And I don't want like to forget that. it. I, I'm sure I won't, but okay. Yeah. That's so, fine. Um, we can do that. So what do you, you want to tell me what we're going to talk about? You want me to tell it? Yeah, I got it. Um, so we did get a couple of the new star players in that we were able to talk about. Finally, we, we can talk about it. We had them in for a while, but anyways, um, and then we're going to talk about them and something else in the first segment. Second segment, we're going to be talking about Middenheim Mash, the tournament I was able to go to uh, in a suburb of Cleveland, Willoughby. And then the last segment, we're going to be talking about Oklahoma and Spiky Cup. It's that time of year again. And a little bit about the World Cup and why it's important to check your websites. So, Okay. (laughs) Sounds good. Let's just get right to it since you're eager to call the audible. I'm curious what this means, so. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And like I said, the first segment, we're going to start off talking about the new star players we're able to finally talk about, which is... Yeah, Cindy Pie Whistle and Puggy Bacon Breath made... Puggy's made his return to Blood Bowl, finally, which is great. Um, We've had these miniatures... For a while now. And we uh, do have to be clear, just to let you know, that we are uh, receiving these as promotional copy from GW. So doesn't mean we're yeah. going to say we love them, because if you know how I feel about halflings, I do not love them, because they're freaking halflings. <laughs> but <laughs> that being said, um, Scott has them in hand right now, and he's showing off on the camera, which yeah. maybe in the future you guys will be able to see. But, yeah. um, so what so, do you think? Um, so how much do these models retail for? Do you know? Yeah, it's probably, I didn't, I guess I could look online real quick. It's probably a $40 pack if I had to I was thinking 40, 45. Okay. So the models, looking at the models, uh, Cindy Pie Whistle looks like she only has, uh, three total pieces. Why Puggy has four total pieces to put together. That is nice, um, at least, because that's a... As a person that just put together a Nurgle Rot Spawn with these kind of resin pieces, I don't know if I love it as much as, like, the plastic. You know what? They are on the front page of Forge World. And they are oh, 41 nice. US dollars. 41 Look, I'm always going to say this because I'm living in, you know, I'm an old man who <laughs> who thinks that, you know, 1995 was 10 years ago and it's 27 years ago, 28 years ago. <laughs> uh, this is probably, I mean, probably a fair price for what the going rate yeah, for, for these two type figures. of figures are. Yeah. I mean, we do get two figures. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of Cindy Pie Whistle, you know, of the... The halflings having a bomber yeah, character. No. And I love halflings. Like, you don't love halflings. I do like halflings. And I don't know if she was needed for that. I mean, to me, that doesn't doesn't feel halflings. It feels goblins. 
Um, well, I mean, uh, the, also, mo- the model is really nice. I this mean, is like new she's halflings. holding the pie. Don't forget, this is redneck halflings. Well, that's true. I do not like that she has one foot just barely off the ground. And obviously, <laughs> if I would be building this model, both feet would be on the ground. I, I get the pose. I get why she's rearing up her leg to get some oomph behind it to, yeah. to throw this uh, hot pie. But other than that, I mean, it looks nice. Uh, for Puggy, I think he looks awesome with the new style of what the halflings look like. I yeah, mean, he looks he like a three strength, you know, a Puggy bacon breath from the past. I do not, I do not, do not, do not. I thought the uh, sandwich on my finger pose with him holding the sandwich, I thought that was going to be like an option to like, do you want to put that on one there? One with the or sandwich, not? one with the football. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I do not like that arm. I do like everything else about him. I just don't like the sandwich balancing on my finger like thing. Yeah. I just wish fair. that was an optional piece. So if I wanted to do it, and I probably could, I could probably craft it where I modify it, but I don't know without opening this up and I haven't opened it up yet. Yeah. You so. can totally snip it, I'm sure. But, but I, I do think they look cool. Mm. Like I said, it's cool to get two two pieces in a package. I, I'm still going to tell you that I think forty one dollars is too much, but it's only I five the, bucks uh, more than like Roxana. So <laughs> I thought the uh, forty something dollars to spend on the rot spawn for one miniature was too much too, <laughs> but I ended up doing it so I could have my Nurgle team all be at the same models. So you could always buy a, a deep root for twice that much. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, it's like seventy eight still. God, it's so crazy. It is, but um. It's cool that they sent this to us. I like that it's not a bunch of pieces. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's the best thing I can tell you on it without... I mean, there's not much to it. It's two halflings. I'm really happy to see Puggy back as an option for the halfling teams. Um, so far, I'm not a fan of Cindy Pie Whistle, but I'm sure one day I'll take her and... She'd make a good sideline amazing... figure. What's that? She would make a good sideline figure. Oh, I think for like a halfling chef option, this would be awesome. Yeah. Like, she would be great for that. So... That would be the plan, you know, I already have a Halfling Chef type figure, but that would be my plan if I was buying this for the first time. So. Yeah. Anyways, uh, thumbs up, I guess, overall. I guess not really a thumbs up. We're going to say uh, three out of, <laughs> two and a half out of four stars, because I do not like everybody being on one foot, and I just don't like the sandwich. But if somebody gifted me these, I would be pretty happy. So Yeah. Well, I, I, I refrain because I've just... Uh, halflings. I understand. Whatever. Totally understand. Um, I, I love the, the... I wish I still had the Scotlings. And I will probably care once I get my second edition ones painted, if that ever happens. Mm-hmm. But until then, you know, whatever. So uh, are we... I mean, they've shown pictures of the other star players, correct? Oh, yeah. They released pictures of... What is it? Withergrasp and... Um, with their grasp and then the two the skink s- twins. Oh, uh, right? dribble and drool. Yeah. Ugh. Um, they look awesome. I just still hate the name. Oh, well, I don't. I'm not a fan of the name. Um, just looking at the pictures on the internet, they look pretty cool. I mean, the wither grass double drool model looks really bulky and like I don't know how he stays up, but at the same time, I'm like, he looks pretty dang cool. And I wonder how many pieces that guy's going to be. But we'll, <laughs> maybe we'll find out someday. So well, Maybe he'll have Anyways. different... Um, there's no reason to think this, but maybe he'll have different mutations. Why would he? In retrospect, I will just take back what I was saying. <laughs> yes, Steve. That, that's the dumbest thing ever. Anyways, I thought it was cool. Uh, they do look cool. I'm sure we'll be able to hopefully talk about them in the future. Um, but hey, uh, GW, if you're listening, you can send us those guys. <laughs> so... Since we got the star players out of the way, Audible, um, an idea I've been thinking about, well, it's honestly an idea I've had for years that I'm starting to think should be implemented, maybe. Iron Man, Blood Bowl, no kickoff table. Like, why do we Iron need a kickoff table? Iron Man, Blood Bowl. So, essentially, so here's the thing, is when it comes to big tournaments, say Chaos Cup, NAFC, World Cup, when you are really trying to prove your worth as a Blood Bowl player, I I feel that 
we should just do away with the randomness of the kickoff table. Is that blasphemy? I disagree. I know. I, I, get, I get what you're saying. You're saying like this would be a better way to measure like the better players yeah. versus. But I think well, we already have the randomness from the dice, from the armor rolls, all that type of stuff. It's just, and I thought the change in blitz would make a difference. It doesn't. It's really no more different than it was because when it's three plus a d three. If mm-hmm. you got three people on the line and you can move, you know, four to six people, that's still most of your team. It's not everybody. It's a little bit it, better. It's better, but here, here's why building. I disagree with you. The The kickoff table provides, um, if somebody scores on turn eight, there is a chance that the ball, the, the kickoff table yeah. will allow the clock to go back and give like a dwarf team one chance to do a Hail Mary pass after they put some catchers way up there on the, on the, you know, I'm not they take their catchers on that, the lines. That, but I, I'm just saying, why? I think why, I mean, like aside I from th- the fact that it is a game mechanic that has been around, I, was it, did the kickoff table always be in the round or is that just a third edition? Thing? So my, my knowledge, I do not remember a kickoff table whatsoever in second edition. Okay. So, it's been around since third edition. We're talking eighty nine. It's been around. But I, I, I could be wrong now that I'm in at my least elder anyways. years. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been around, been around since third game. edition. So, I I get it, but aside from the fact that it is part of the game, does it bring any true value to the game? And again, yes, it's yeah. fun and stuff. I'm just saying, like. I'm not saying for all tournaments. I'm saying for like just the the big ones, like you. Because I was thinking about this but like I, with Oracle Home Bowl and stuff. Because it just sometimes it sucks. It does suck, and I've been on many ends of like oh, you got to be effing me another blitz, mm-hmm. and it does suck. But like in situations where I'm talking about the last game I played, where I <laughs> I totally agree that the blitz that happened that was. Be- you know, the guy, I only won that game because I got a blitz. I, yeah. I truly believe that. But here's how that it came to be. Like, I didn't get to explain everything. Like, I set up my team. That guy decides to go heavy on the right side. Yeah. And overloads the, the right side, hot and heavy. And I took a chance and didn't kick it into the middle. I took it two spaces to the left from the middle, hoping Hoping, hoping, hoping I'd get the right, you know, right bounce and it wouldn't go out of bounds. And maybe by chance, even if I don't get the blitz, he has to run a few guys back that direction and maybe next turn, like he drops the ball or something like that. So I was taking a chance too. And so we were, he chose as a coach to overload the one side. I took to try to, I hope this will happen. And then the, 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 Nuffle and the dice fates decided for us that the ball would scatter where it did and then roll a blitz. And I think the kickoff table makes you have to think about what if, what if, what if. I constantly think as a player when I'm stalling, do I want to give him, I should score now, but what if that kickoff table goes back one turn? Yeah. I constantly think about that. And it's it's a scary to me. It's always a scary moment inside, especially in a tight game that I'm really proud to be up. You know, two to one or one to oh, nothing, sure, or yeah. even tie, and somebody has some speed burners and stuff. It's it's scary. So I 100 percent get what you're saying. This is like Magic players, um, One Piece players, uh, Dragon Ball players. They like the format of best two out of three because most of the time the better skilled and prepared player will win if there's a two out of three matchup. Yeah. Whereas if it's a one-off game, you could have one bad game and get beat by some guy that's not so good. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I get what you're saying. I'm not saying like they shouldn't try it. I'm just saying I would probably miss the kickoff table in someone. Yeah, that's fair. I was just throwing it out there because like I said, it. You and I both it, have be, recently had experience. It'd be an interesting experiment, to be honest with you, and I'm not ballsy enough to just take away a kickoff <laughs> table to do that. Yeah. But 
it would be interesting to see if like everybody kind of fills in their spots, you know, like if there was, I don't know, 16 people there, does the Scott finish about where he normally would like a sixth or seventh, you know, type place, or, yeah. you know, it just depends. I, I don't know how to answer that. Okay. But there is some games where kickoff tables <laughs> beat you. It's oh, just... for sure. Yeah. And then sometimes it gives you a win too. And it just, it just adds that extra level of randomness, which if we do try to, you know, because we do keep track, the NAF does, and it give you rankings. And if they're giving rankings, then it seems to me that there should be some type of evenness to the field. And yes, everyone's going to say, Blood Bowl's not fair. It's not meant to be even. I know, but I'm just saying, like, this would be an interesting thing to see. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Maybe like a universal format for two yeah. years for all, all big events. But then again, I mean, to me, and I might, I don't mean to like offend people because I'm just throwing out examples. You might have the, the people from Spain feel like this format is correct mm -hmm. and you might feel people from america think this format is correct and you know they disagree on the tiering system and as much as you know some of the world cup rules that we used in uh critter bowl i think maybe fixed some of the problems with star players it made you really think if you wanted to take a star player yeah sure. at the same time <laughs> to me blood bowl is made to be I have a 1.2 million team. I'm versing your 1.2 million team. Oh, it's really terrible for me that I took goblins and mm -hmm. you took dwarves. In that at that one, you know, that yeah. type of example. Whereas if it was lizard men versus dwarves, I might have an advantage because I have all the strength. So I don't know. I think Blood Bowl, you have to accept it's not a kind game and there's a lot of <laughs> men. Nuffle will always find his way. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. I was just throwing it out there. Like I said, I, I've always wanted the idea it, of a four year cycle for rankings so that, you know, oh, it I think falls that's off. a cool idea. And, you know, for majors where they get double points, I don't think it's un, unfair to require a more structured format, maybe. But again, I, I get you know. I get everything you're saying, and I'm not saying it's necessarily wrong, but then you're going to get <laughs> you're going to get a whole world of blood bowlers trying to argue like, you know, Oh, the English made the rules for this next four yeah. years and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, somebody else might be, oh, those stupid Americans. And they've just played the bash, you know, game. And it's leaned towards those type of teams. Uh, I think the kickoff table and Blood well, again, Bowl being. I think, a g as I say, if, I, if we did that type of thing, then it'd be the same rule set for everybody, for any of those big events. I know that no somebody TV. has to have the committee to make them is what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, we don't agree with everything that NAF chooses. No. So therefore, you think everybody else is too. No, that's fair. I think <laughs> I think blood bowlers we like to gripe about maybe the kickoff table <laughs> a lot. But there's as much as I gripe about it, there's been as many times that it's helped me too. Of course. And I think a little bit of the randomness keeps bringing us back. It's like a, it's like a girl that's kind of crazy, but some days she looks really good. It's and like so there's like a chance. You, you keep going back. You keep going back. You're like, well, I don't know. Maybe not. Okay. I mean, I get your wrong. point. Though. Yeah, I get. I get your point. And until somebody tries it, we don't know. Fair. So okay. Well, I just wanted to, like I said, since we were talking about it, that popped into my mind no, again, i mean that's so. a it's a great point i mean there's been times where you've taken i think the blitz action off the like spiky cup mm -hmm. or nuffle ween kickoff table and to me you have to prepare for that so you yeah. have to think about the game and then when we i play those games i always think like okay well i'll go ahead and score on turn seven there's the clock's not going to roll back so i'm not worried about this you know yeah. unless he gets like five pushes there's no chance well, it's not even just blitz. I mean, like with the uh, officious ref. It, you oh, still that one's brutal. Where you can still somebody take somebody out. off the pitch. Yeah. Oh, that's just as bad as the old. It's throw a, a rock little to bit death. better because they can't die. I mean, we had the notorious thrower in our league who kept killing people the last in week. week eight. <laughs> but in week eight, old left eye. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> no, one eye. Sorry. One eye. Yeah, that's right. Um. But yeah, 
I don't know. I don't like. I get it. I enjoy it because it's there. It, I, I've I've made my point. I rest my case. You, you did. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that um, is enough for this segment. Yeah. So get out there and buy a Cindy Pie Whistle and Puggy Bacon Breath from GW. And tell them both down South. sent you. Tell, yeah. All right, we are back for Middenheim Mash Report. Steve got to travel to, was it Willoughby? Yeah, Willoughby. Ohio? Yep. It's a little suburb. Oh. I don't know if it's little. It's a suburb of Cleveland. Yeah, Steve's foreign to everything, so it's all little suburbs. Well, I just... Even Cleveland and Columbus and Cincinnati. What? Little towns. No, they're quite big towns. They're big, they're big towns, not I'd like cities. to get... I, I would like to go to Cleveland and just hang out for a weekend, but it's also expensive to do so. I just haven't got to that point yet. You need to start an OnlyFans page. I do. I really do. Like, yeah, only Blood Bowl fans. Yeah, but only. Blood Bowl fans. I don't think anyone wants to see that. Sadly, I don't. Not really. Sadly, I'm fine with that. I don't. I don't want to show my body for money. I mean, I oh, would. I would. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't. I just don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a whore. All right. <laughs> so, Middenheim Mash, give me, it was a yeah. tournament. It was a money tournament. Yeah. So, this is the tournament that Kyle Fry ran, and I appreciate him in doing so. Um, he was using the match play guide. So, it was basically, there's the rules. Go for it. Okay. Um, and it was a cash out. So, we ended up having only six people, but it's still fun. Um, the payout was, was first place got 30, second place got 20 and third place got 10. Was that, was entry $10 a person? Uh, 10 if you had NAF, 20 if not. Was there non-NAF people there? I don't think so. Okay. Um, they pretty much all knew each other and okay. we got, we got free pizza. So that was awesome. Appreciate okay. that. That's cool. So I pulled up, um, I left early, got, he's only an hour and 20 minutes away so it's not bad just grab some mcdonald's i got there and i was like well this is the address is this the building it was like a three-story medical complex building it was like where you have doctor's offices or something and i go oh, in okay. and i'm like is i mean this is the right address and there's a 202 i got there before everybody else so you know it wasn't technically open yet um then I had to leave to go use the restroom because all the doors were locked. Um, but I came back, and uh, what it was is there's a gaming group up there who has transitioned from a gaming group to a gaming store. So it's like a group of guys who got together and played, but they I, I don't know if they pulled the money or the someone just decided to open a store. But it's... Like I said, it's on the second floor of an office building. And it's like a regular office, sort of. You go in. It's not huge. It had a lot of product. It had a lot of stuff. Um, had a few tables and plenty enough room to play. It was just a very odd location. Okay. But I am testing out my World Cup team, Campbell Claymores. Uh, like I said, this was the rules pack. So you basically had 1.2 to build. Um, I made a roster that matched what I would prob would possibly be taking to World Cup, um, which is my Norse team. A Yeti, two Orphanus, two Berserkers, six Linemen, and a star, Ivar Eriksson. And then I would only have one reroll in a World Cup event, but since this is a slightly bigger build, I had two. And then the dedicated fan. Uh, I took Mighty Blow on the Yeti, Block on the two Orphroners, and a Tackle on the Berserker. Okay. And, of course, it's light. It's Norse. I'm going to get beat up. I realize that. I've been told that. But I wanted to try Ivar. And he ended up being really freaking good. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Ivar is 6'4", 3+, 4+, 9+, plus, plus, plus. block, guard, loner, 3+, plus, tackle, and then raiding party. 
Raiding party is once per drive. Whenever Ivar begins his activation, he may choose one open player on his team within five squares. The chosen player may immediately move one square, ignoring tackle zones, though they must end up end this move marking an opposition player. So okay. being once a drive is a big deal. It's not once a half, it's not once per game. Like every time, every drive I try to make use of it and it came in handy. Oh, okay. So before we recorded, I looked at it and you, cause you said it, you liked it. And then I was like, Oh, this is like once per turn. Like I thought it was like white dwarf grum brindle who does his thing once per turn. Oh no, dude. this is once per drive. Okay. I was once like, per That's turn to really be amazing. Powerful. Gotcha. Yeah. I wish, but no, not quite. Um, uh, right. so first game, I'll just go through my games. Then if you have any questions, just let me know. I will. First game, I went up against Trevor Fry with his Lizard Man team. Uh, And he had basic, you know, blockers, chameleon skinks, linemen. You know, what you do. Linemen. Well, skink linemen, whatever. Um, Okay. And then, you know how most people put block on the Sorai? Uh Uh-huh. He decided to put Frenzy on them. I was not expecting that. So well, his Frenzy how, plus how, my Frenzy. And um, which was how interesting. How did that work out for him? Well, the, the problem is he got he also took Glottal Stop. The friggin' six strength lizard man. Or a Croxigore. Uh, okay. And again, he had Frenzy. So he was basing it on that. Oh, okay. Um. I did not like that at all. Um, the Yeti did get a casually, like the second turn, uh, which was nice. And, um, oh yeah, the, it was Glottal Stop that I got the casualty on. So that was the game changer right there, just straight off. He uh, went to to Blitz Me and uh, he did the Frenzy, end up getting a one skull on the Yeti, and or one die on the Yeti, got a skull. Rerolled into a skull. Bam. Down he goes. Yeti, claw, mighty blow, star gone. Wow. And, so you got fortunate. Oh, yeah. For sure. Like, he was still playing pretty well. Um, it was... With all the frenzy and all the strength and everyone just positioning, it was just kind of a scrum in a lot of ways. Uh, at halftime, I did go up one to nothing because I was stalling. I had some of mm-hmm. his people off the pitch, got some couple of casualties, got a lot of knockouts. And I think he had maybe five people in the knockout at half. Um, and then uh, second half, he just couldn't keep up. And the Yeti was just going on a rampage. Uh, he got like three knockouts and a casualty. So I had numbers on him. It wasn't wasn't too horribly close. Um, at the well, he's on the sixth, he was also beating me up too, which is a common oh. theme in this. Um, okay. So by the uh, sixth turn of the second half, it was six on six. So that was not good. Uh, okay. Don't like where this is going. No. But I did end up winning two to one. No, excuse me, uh, that was the casualties. I ended up winning three to nothing. Oh, um, okay. Well, that that speaks a lot. But yeah, you were going to tell me that it was super <laughs> close. No, um, he just had bad luck, and you know, I had numbers on him, and that's really all it takes. Is his his Saurus weren't able to keep up. I was knocking him down. His skinks, I had the star has tackle. I took a guy with tackle. I was just peeling him off. So I ended up getting three to nothing. Um, That round, though, I tell you, it really made me like the star player. Because there's a couple of times I was looking and I'm like, you know, I really wish I could just, you know, be one square closer here or there. 
And I used it one time to get the Yeti right up on somebody in a cage and just bash the crap out of them. And then used it another time for like the third touchdown. Like there was no chance I was going to score. I moved the guy one square, just had to dodge away and go f do the rush a couple of times and got the third touchdown. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't, you know, with having that star player, you could go, you know, go hit all the edges of the cage or something like that and then just push a guy in there yeah. for free. Yeah, it really, really is nice. The only bad thing is you have to do it at the at the um, activation of the star. Like, there's a lot of times I wanted to do it to where, like, I just do it and then do the star later because that would be better. But eventually I got into a habit of doing that. That's uh, cool. For the most part, uh, not a whole lot. Like I said, I just had numbers on him. Um, it was decently close, but, you know, when I said six on six, he's got skinks and a couple of Saurus. I've got, you know, Yeti, Wolf Runners. I'm just able to pretty much do what I want. So, okay. So you won the first game, three nothing. Second game, who second, are you playing against? Second game, I played against uh, Roger Taylor. And Wait a I, second. When did you get pizza? Uh, right before then, pizza came. Oh, it pizza was a game. Okay. I think it was Supreme. It had a it had green bell pepper on it, and wow. it was really good. Did you eat it? Yeah, of course. I don't mind oh. it. Okay. Um, but so again, there was a pizza. It was good. There was like cheesy bread. That was good. And then a thing of potato wedges. What was this pizza from? I don't know. But that's just an Ohio thing here is that they put potato wedges everywhere. And I don't get it. Like on the pizza? Not on the pizza, but like, you know how um, you, a lot of people get wings with pizza? Yeah. Up here, the primary thing for Ohio for pizza is they put provolone instead of mozzarella, which is okay. good. I don't have an issue with that. Yeah. But then they also sell... Full ass fried chicken and potato wedges, which they call JoJo's. Gotcha. I don't get it. It's not bad. I just I don't understand the correlation between them. Hmm. And like anyone I talk to here is like, yeah, that's just how it is. I'm like, but why? Well, I don't know. Just what it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't. That's cool. Can't argue that. <laughs> so going into the second round. I was all happy when I learned I was going up against a goblin team. Um, and then, you know, I went, he had two trolls, one with block, one with strong arm, which never came into play. Strong arm never came into play. He had an Ooligan with sneaky git, which did come into play. Uh, two linemen that had diving tackle that also never came into play. Six other linemen, Scrap is Sorehead, and Varog Gulchur. Hmm. He, he can be a beast. <sighs> yeah. Uh, he was, too. Like, uh, just destroying me. And he has jump up. So, like, yeah. I, I, yeah. I was not doing well. Varag, um, let's see. Looking at just what Vorag did, he had knockout, 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 casualty, knockout. So he had four knockouts and a casualty, just Vorag. But wow. that's not his MVP. His freaking MVP was the Ooligan, who had... Um, one, two, three, four, four knockouts and two casualties, I think. Just from fouling you? Just from freaking fouling. Why didn't you hit him? He never got caught. I couldn't get close to him. I could not mm. get close to him. Well, and good I mean, player. he was playing really well. Um, he had a very deep bench. So even, and I couldn't break his armor. Like truthfully, I got one casualty the whole game. He got four against me. Um, I could not break his armor, even with the tackle. I was getting pals. 
I was not even getting both downs. I was getting pals on goblins. Did not make a difference. Um, second half, um, there was a, ch- like the first half, there was a chance I could have scored. I just had to hand off the ball and I could probably break down the side. I just failed. It was, I needed a three. I got a two, re-rolled a two. So that screwed me over. Um, second half, um, the Yeti goes down due to the officious ref. Didn't get taken off the pitch, thankfully, but he went down at the beginning of the second half. Um, he did have bad luck the second turn. He got into quad skulls, so I thought I had a chance for a little bit. And um, I was going down the pitch, and I th- was very close to being able to tie it. This is another time where I used the star player ability where my guy had the ball and he's nine away from the end zone. And he thought, you know, there's no chance I could get there. Well, I used the star player's ability, just activated him, didn't do anything else with him because he was, I didn't want to risk it. And I moved up my ball carrier into tackle zone, one square forward with one of his guys. Then I was able to dodge away. And unfortunately... This was on a lineman, so you know where this is going. Uh, I got to the end zone and uh, failed the rush on two because of drunkard. Mm. So, but I had a chance. So both halves, I had a chance, like one dice roll away from getting it. Again, doesn't matter because I didn't get it. Then he just, he just, I mean, he's already up on me at this time. But I ended the game with a note that just says not pitch cleared with three exclamation points. <laughs> That's how the game went. Because he destroyed me. Like Vorag is a beast. Jump up, even if I take him down, he just pops right back up and smacks me in the face. And he has that crushing blow to where he can once mm-hmm. a game use an extra on the armor. Yeah. Yes. He used it and it worked perfectly. Got him a casualty, you know. Um, and he was taking out good pieces, not just, I mean, the Yeti was gone. The Orphanus are gone. The star was gone. I was down to very few people at the end. I was down to one guy and he fouled him. Didn't get out. And I hmm. think he only got caught fouling once and it wasn't even with the Ooligan. He rolled doubles uh-huh. multiple times on breaking armor. Doesn't matter anymore. Right. God, I hate that so much. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that that sucks balls, dude. Um. Anyway, All right. So it's it's losing to goblins. Nobody wants to do that. Um. It's, it's capable. I mean, the stunty teams are no longer gimme games. Yeah, for sure. Um. So last game is only three rounds. I went up against Kyle Fry, the guy running it, and he played his Black Orcs. Beautiful team. Just stunning to look at. Um, He's very proud of him, as he should be. He had four... No, he had five Black Orcs, two Guard, one Tackle, one Mighty Blow. He had a Goblin Bruiser with sure hands, and the rest of them just filled out to Goblin Bruisers. So 11 people... No block. Three re-rolls. No block. Uh, Three re-rolls. One assistant coach. Oh, yeah. And freaking Vorak again. Oh, that makes sense. (sighs) Yeah. So I had to go up against Vorak again. And on this one, on my turn three, um, he took out my star. Vorag used his special ability on my star. Pff, gone. So I had to play the so, whole game without my star. So my advice to everybody, if you take those people that can do that extra one point of damage or whatever, do it at the very, very beginning because you don't know if your star player is going to yep. be around after that. Absolutely. And uh, Vorag was just a freaking beast again. Um, I did end up thankfully getting rid of him about the fourth turn 
on the first half. I knocked him out. Didn't casually, just knocked him out. Uh, he had some... I was doing pretty good. I ended up scoring at the end of the first half. I stalled, again, because I was up people. He had um, five people in the KO, including uh, Varag and, like... Let me back and look. I took notes. Varag and... Three black orcs were in the okay. knockout, and then a couple of goblins. So I I could have scored earlier, but I just risked it and stalled and tried to hurt more people. And sure. uh, I scored, and because I he got the ball first, so I ended the half. And at halftime, he got four out of his five knockouts back, <laughs> including Vorag. And all the black orcs. So I was like, damn it. Um, second half, we just started going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, knockouts, knockouts. Uh, by the second turn, it was seven on seven. Um, by turn six, it was six on six. Are you kidding me? And the second game, there was six on six again. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So I scored on turn six, and this time he had four KOs, and he got one back. I had three KOs, and I only got one back. So then, like on the turn six, it was six on six, and he he was receiving because I scored twice, and he goes and hands off the ball to. I think, was it, did I take a note? You know you played this yesterday. You should be able to remember this. Yeah, I don't give a shit. I can't remember. It was Vorag. <laughs> um, I'm just giving you a hard time. I know. I can't remember crap. But he hands he goes to hand off the ball to Vorag and gets it. And I'm like, crap. And again, I'm up to two to zero at this point, so it's not a huge deal. But um, you just never know. Like we're talking about with the kickoff table. You just never know. So he gets it. He got. He rolled just enough to get it. He needed a three. He got a three. And then, as he was looking, not it didn't take too long. I thought, wait a minute, he's three squares away from the yeti. I was like, wait, he did not get it. Be a disturbing presence. He's like, oh crap, you're right. So uh, he did not get the ball. Nobody got the ball for the rest of the half. I end up winning two to nothing. But again, he got four casualties to my two. So I'm winning games. I'm just getting my ass beat. So uh, the tournament, I went two wins and a loss. Um, there was a the goblin guy I played also had two wins and a loss because he went to the top table and lost. Um, it was down to us for best record. And... There was no head-to-head for a tiebreaker. The tiebreaker was most touchdowns, and we both had five. So the next tiebreaker went to casualties, and he beat me by, like, four, I think, or something, by a lot. He basically beat me by how many he had against me. I mean, to be fair, if it came down to tiebreakers... He, he should have got it up. anyways He'd... because I had head, yeah. Yeah. I, mean... I, 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 told, I told him that, too. It's like, I don't have an issue. He should have been. No, I'm not saying I wouldn't have taken it. This is an issue. No, it depends what's in the rule set, but yeah. I'm just saying, like, based off, yeah, I got you. And that's why it's in there. That's where head head would come into play because oftentimes we have it on ours. And like, how, when would this come into play? Well, there it came into play. But I did get second, so I got twenty bucks. Um, entry was only ten, so I made ten bucks, and I got free pizza Dang. and had a lot of fun. Just think, if you would drive an hour and fifteen minutes away every weekend. <laughs> Spend ten dollars and make twenty dollars. If you did that every weekend, you would be broke. Be in the hole. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Between gas and lunch and everything. I know. I'm joking. But yeah, I, no, I get it. I can. I guess I could say I'm a professional blood bowl player, though. I made money at it. Oh, you can say that now. <laughs> but everybody there was really cool, so that was nice. It was a fun so day. You got just, new friends. Just I don't. I don't know about that, but hopefully. I did give them all um, a big deal figure so they could have that and pens from the podcast. So you bribed them? Yeah. I mean, that's what we do. 
I mean, that's a common thing. It's yeah. how we keep friends. Mm. So a lot of you keep friends, that's for sure. <laughs> but like I said, overall, it was an odd place, but it was neat that they were just starting up. Uh, I think they literally started maybe last month. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So with six people, mm-hmm. only $60 on the line, only $30 on the line for first place. Yeah. Give me an honest question or uh, honest feedback here. Would you have rather went there and got a little second place trophy? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Me, yes. 100%. And then like the get money's some other nice. Awards, like... But, you know, okay. I don't even have that well, money anymore. I literally went, to, I Googled Toy Store and I went to a toy store that was about 12 minutes away. And while I was there, I found the vehicle accessory pack for G.I. Joe, number one. And I offered the guy 20 bucks and he took it. Okay. So I won a G.I. Joe accessory pack from like 85. Sure. So I've always said that I do not want to play games I enjoy for money Mm -hmm. because I feel like it changes people's mindsets and how they do stuff. If somebody knocks down my player, but then they move on to the next thing and they forget to roll the armor roll, I have a feeling if like, 300 bucks was on the line. Do I say something or not? And then I feel like a crappy person for even thinking about that. So that's the thing is like 300 bucks on the line. I might be cheating and I'm a pretty honest fucking person, but when it comes to 300 cup steaks, everybody got $10 per person. That's a lot of money on the line. Yeah. If it's divided into one, two and three, 1600. So yeah. Yeah. I'm, I know that's a bad example. Yeah, you know, I get you. Um, and I get that with $30, Thanks. you probably didn't carry the way. I mean, $10 entries, I thought you were real. Honestly, when you told me you were going to this, I thought it was a $25 to $30 entry, like most Blood Bowl tournaments. And yeah. Stuff. So I thought there was some real money, you know, $100 at least on the line. No, and he did give away a trophy for first place, a little light-up trophy. That was really cool. And he gave okay. away a wooden spoon. So he and he bought pizza. So he actually is out more money than he brought in. Sure. But again, like I would rather he not be out money and just give away little trophies. Now, if he'd given away as many trophies as we do, like giving away ten trophies with six people, that would suck. No, I, I get that. I'm not. I'm not even knocking the guy for just trying. Oh, sure, yeah. Let's try a money thing. I'm just saying, like, if I would have heard that, and we were, let's say, Dallas was going to do a money thing, mm-hmm. I don't. I'm three and a half, three hours away. I don't think I would go. And that's just being bluntly honest. I'd rather go down there, pay an entry fee, buy some raffle tickets, come back and go. Oh, I want a dark elf team, and you yeah. know, and. Got to see my friends and stuff like that. I don't know if I would have went if there was, oh, hundred dollars, you know, hundred fifty dollars for first, uh, eighty dollars for second. Well, it's the same thing as if you go to a tournament and it's like you win first place and you get this painted team and a hundred dollars store credit. I, like, I again yeah, also I don't, don't like that. that either. No, yeah, I, I, I don't. I'm not a big fan of the uh, rich get richer. Yeah, and I know I'm a weirdo who. <laughs> no, I think that's common. Really? In this I thing. really, I really do love my, you know, six dollar trophy or or ten dollar trophy that I got from Chaos Cup. I really cherish that, yeah. and I know it's going to get thrown in the trash the day I'm laid to, laid to rest. Yeah. But I'm saying, yes, I spent a thousand dollars to go to Chaos Cup, and happy to get us eight dollar trophy. So I, I mean, I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying it would have derailed me from going, hearing that it was a money tournament. Now, if yeah. you would have told me, like, it's only a $10 injury, Scott, I might have changed my mind because people might not lose their minds over that. But I was just curious, like, if this might be a trend going forward. I think it's great they ran a tournament because yeah. you've got to start somewhere. We talk about that a million times on here. Like, hopefully those guys will run another event. And, just and they keep, apparently have keep ran them before, so I don't know oh, what well, rules that they did. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's cool. I'm certainly glad. I would happily go back and play again. Yeah, um, I mean, your experience again, like, sounds... That's we why. talked a little bit off the air. Yeah. Your experience sounds like you had a good time. It was nice to go to a tournament. Oh, for sure. And play some Blood Bowl. So I'm not I'm not knocking that. I'm just but, saying like... But like you, like you were talking about with the money. That is 100% yes. why I bought the accessory pack. Is I mean, that will always I, be a reminder that I won that tournament. Or game second at the tournament, you know? 
Sure. And you like to keep things in packages. Well, sure. Yeah. It's awesome. It's like the tournament in Iowa when they were talking about playing for two whole American dollars. Mm -hmm. They got me because I misread that. And I saw that that was $200 (laughs) and I, I lost my mind and I was like, I can't believe those guys are going to do a money tournament for the winner getting $200. And, and then I caught the, thing after they got me <laughs> and then i felt like an idiot but i really was like there's no way i'd go to that thing i just wouldn't even well, i guess we're not even going if to... you told me even if you told me like you're gonna get to go play and you you have a 90 percent chance of winning i, I just don't want to be in that that mindset that i see it all the time with yeah. magic players and dragon ball people and stuff like that and they laugh at me because i i tell them all the time I would much rather say I won this tournament. Everybody knows I won this tournament. I'd much rather have that than six packs of magic cards. Yeah. Any day of the week. Yeah. But see, back when we did drafts, like on Friday nights, where those mm-hmm. are so plentiful, I didn't care. Like, I, oh, would, I did. And that's I, why I every time I yeah. got in the finals, those guys would be like, you just want to call it? Like, say we tied and split the prices? I was like, no, I want to play it out. See, and I always, I, I always I got, did the call. I, because... I got boned every time I, that happened. But... <laughs> yeah. And I always split it because we got out faster and I don't really care. And I get, you know, back when I was doing that, I was basically just pulling for money so I can have more money to go towards the next tournament. So, I, I understand. Yeah. But, yes, for Blood Bowl... And again, I I 100% appreciate them running it. I had a great time. I have no issues with them doing it for money. It is just not something that we would do. Is this the store that has the league in your area? No. No, this is a whole different place. Okay. I was just curious because I know the store that had a league also was a little bit of a drive. And I just didn't know. Yeah, it's it's about the same. Um, I need to make it out there. I probably will coming up. Well, no, I, I think it's great. I hope they run more tournaments and stuff like that. And, you know. Maybe they'll hear this feedback, and as you as a player, you know, the pizza and a little $5 trophy would have been plenty for you. So yeah. maybe that's the future route they go. But and I really who knows? Think... Maybe, maybe the other five players like playing for just a little bit of money. That's not enough to, that you'd stab your friend in the back, and at the same time, there's something Well, I think line. ultimately it comes down to the fact, too, that, as you said, it's no one really cares because it's that small, which means we're there for, to have fun. Which means it's okay to get some trophies or put that money towards, you know, store prizes or, you know, yeah. whatever. Something like that. But, again, people are welcome to do what they want. Um, hell, you can just give us printed uh, certificates like we used to do. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I still kept most of mine. I mm-hmm. think they're in there. There's, there's some with my name misspelled. And stuff I still like have that, the poopy so. diaper award. Yeah. Anyway, I, I was just curious. I'm, I'm glad to hear. Yeah, of course. You know, I'm glad. To, in some ways, you know, I was expecting to hear like, oh, 20 coaches showed up and there was $400 on the line. And then at some point you were going to go like, well, this one guy, you know, yeah. did this and something, you know, cheaty. Or you did something cheaty. I mean, because $400 is a lot of money. Yeah, of course. And, and again, realistically, I'm not. I'm, I, I don't really think I'm going to cheat. But. I wouldn't put it past me given the opportunity. If that makes sense. Well, well, my main example is, is like, you know, you should tell somebody you forgot to roll my armor. Exactly. That's, but if your if your character was three spaces away from the end zone Mm -hmm. and that was your only saving grace, you got to remind them when $400 is on one. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know my character. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think I know my character. All I know is if I ended up winning that game, I'd feel like a real bad big dirt bag and probably feel super guilty for the rest of my life. I'm perfectly fine feeling guilty for a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> well, like we know. Uh, yeah. It's how I make my living. <laughs> <laughs> Steve um, is a goblin. But yeah, otherwise, um, I'm glad you had fun. I'm glad you got to go out. Yeah. For it's sure. nice to hear that you're giving a blood bowl tournament report on the podcast and even in another state. So I think that's really cool. So, yeah, I definitely need to redo my note taking ability because it, it's still I, I still like my sheet. It's just it has to be better. And then I got to. We're not gonna get on this on the air, but I if it was me, 
you've told me now twice in detail that you only came down to six people on the pitch. I would have more characters on that team. I know. I don't want to talk any further we've, about it. You can. You have plenty of time to change your roster if you want to. Yep. And I know everybody has to go towards their play style. But the fact that you told me, I know, like two, I said, ro- two I, rosters. I was very ha- like I said. I was testing for World Cup. He is a great star player. He brings a lot of things to the table that are very useful for my team, and his special ability is amazing. Because it really catches people off guard and gives me the ability to do certain things that I wouldn't normally be able to do. That being said, I was also very happy that he was taken out so early in the third game to give me a sense of how the team would play without him. And I was still able to win. um, But again, that also goes into if I'm able to win without him, then why do I have him when he's that much? When I could take extra rerolls, blah, blah, blah. But yes, it's all a work in progress. But I was very happy to... Get a couple of wins. And I don't know how to say this without sounding like a know-it-all because I don't mean it this way, but it's unlikely that you're going to play a lizard man team with a spamming. Oh, uh, for sure. Frenzy. Yeah, no. It's, no. it's unlikely that you're going to play a black orc team spamming and uh, not having any block is what I'm kind of getting at. It's unlikely I'm going to go against a glottal stop who's going to skull himself out. As well, yeah, I get it 100%. Well, I mean, sometimes that stuff happens. I mean, yeah, but sometimes I, 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 I never forget more when I, in the, you know, at Chaos Cup, I'm playing in the Stunty Cup with my all Stotling team, and he triple skulls and knocks yeah. himself off the pitch like two plays in. So it happens, it that stuff kind of happens, but I'm just saying, like, the builds weren't op- optimum builds on those ends, too. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, obviously, in the Goblin game, you got what what goblins need somebody to kind of roll bad and that was a little a, bit of luck on their side. And honestly, that so. was a great build. The Uligan with a dirty player and Vorag, like it was, and he used Scrappa to just hold the ball and run. And he, and they had no other weapons, none. He had no secret so, weapons. And that was I, the thing I is like, try I try that because I feel like that's why I don't want to play goblins is I don't want somebody to score real quick and half my team go away. So, and he even told me like he had an Ooligan. I understood that, but for some reason in my head, it was a ball and chain guy. Like, so I was like, Oh great. He's down a guy. He's going to have to bring in his secret weapon. And he's going to be gone for the second half. And he only had the one bribe and he goes, I don't have any secret weapons. I'm like, but what about, Oh, Oh damn it. <laughs> So yeah, like the he got caught fouling one time, used a bribe, was able to get out of it, and then uh, when when they I don't roll up, and again, stupid rolling doubles on armor doesn't affect you. That is broken. It one hundred percent is broken, but it's the current blood bowl that we're in. So yep. All right, we're gonna take a little break, and then we will be back to talk about Oklahoma Bowl. Weekend. Weekend. Okay, we are back, and we're going to be talking about Oklahoma Bowl Weekend, which is Oklahoma Bowl 11 and Spiky Cup 11. Well, funny how that works, huh? And um, it is on June 24th and 25th of 2023. So it's just a couple months away by the time you uh, it is. download this. And it's way closer than we really want it to be. <laughs> yeah. Like, this this has been a weird year, obviously. And things have been, you know, in flux. Hopefully next year will be much better. We'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, obviously. Oh, well, yeah. We, we really do. I mean, we really suck at planning stuff. Um, but again, hopefully next year will be much better. Um, I so, mean, the good news is, is the d- dice are, um, created, um, just so people know you get dice. If you come to Oklahoma, you get dice. If you come to spiky cup and if you come for the whole weekend, there's another set of dice that you will get. And all three have unique, uh, icons on it. Yep. We don't have pictures of those yet, but we will get them updated to the website eventually. But. If you want to see the pictures of those icons, they are on the website. So you just scroll down. It's uh, yeah. where it says both events. It says Oklahoma Bowl weekend. It's a little book. And then you also have the Spiky 11 and the Oklahoma 11. So, Yeah, and if you think, wow, website sure does look different than last time. 
Well, yeah. maybe uh, people should check their websites more than once or twice a year because I updated it um, back last time I had to update it after the last event. Not that I look at it that often. And I keep getting emails telling me, you know, they updated this, they updated that. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's fine. Update your shit, I don't care. Stop telling me. Well, go to look at the website, update it, and it's gone. <laughs> and uh, get uh, Scott's, or I guess our buddy Brock to look at it, because he made the last website, and it's like, yeah, 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 it's gone. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. So contact the provider and tell the provider, hey, this is gone. Can You have backups, right? So, oh, yeah, yeah, we got backups, no problem. They go to back it up and like, oh, it's still blank. I'm like, well, can you go further back? Oh, well, we back. I thought it's like, don't you back it up every month? They go, yeah, we do, but we overwrite the last the last backup, so we only ever keep a month at a time. I was like, damn it. Yeah. So, so Steve had like a cool thing where you know past winners were displayed, yeah, and pictures, all that. So like. It is cobbled together and thrown up there as quickly as possible <laughs> to get, um, you know. It's fine some... for what it is. It's just not optimal. Uh, and I'll be well, improving it over I'm time. Not, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go and get crazy, but the graphic designer in me is like, oh, my God. You're welcome but to log in and change it. <laughs> that's why I haven't said anything, because I knew that's what you'd give me. So <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I'm not a graphic designer. Speaking of, we, I did update the rules this year, though. You did? I think they look better. I totally stole it from World Cup, but whatever, you know. Yeah, let's uh, let's go over the rules really quick. So you can click on the rules and registration button right off the bat. Um, so, um, well, first, the costs. If you're just coming to one event, it's $30 right now at the Early Bird Special through June 1st. Um, if you want to do both days, it's $50. And then the regular pricing after that's going to go up. Basically, it's going to cost you 35 for each event and you know, 60 for Spikey, which I probably would have made it a little bit higher. That way we can get some people in the door. But here, here's the information I'm going to give you right now. I was told today by the Wizards Asylum owner that right now, we are allowed 60 people in the door. Only 60? Only 60. If you have not been to Wizards in a long time, you're thinking, but we've held more than 60 people there before. Yeah. And if you haven't been into Wizards in a, over the last like six months or so, we have really expanded our comic back issues. And like the owner is heavy into like looking for back issues to then sell at the store. And there is quite a few good items there. Um, he just cares about comics more. And I was like, when I was counting tables today, I was like, where are the other tables? Because we used to have tables in the back room. And he's like, what are you talking about? And then we finally was like, oh, we've used like oh. six tables to now hold comics. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's where the tables went. So I said, well, we need a number. And he goes, well, I'm going to tell you 60. And he said, if you get to 60, he said, because I don't want you to have like an odd, weird number. I also don't want you to, you know, he said, let's say 60. If you get to 60, cap it. And if there is a demand for more tables, he goes, you come to me and we'll see what we can do. Okay. And I said, okay. So therefore, wow. right now we are capped at 60 people. And it's not impossible to get. I mean, like I said, attendance has been going up everywhere. So, um. oh no, it's it's not impossible to get. Um, if you know the store order, store owner Brian, you had to like <laughs> marinate him in these ideas. So uh, here's what I think is going to happen: if we come to him and there's three weeks before the tournament, and we said we have 60 people right now, he is going to. He has now thought about this. He's going to go, you know what? I might as well buy some more tables. And he'll go out and he'll buy like three or four new tables and it will open up, you know, yeah. anywhere from, you know, four to eight spots, maybe 12 spots. So that's what I predict will happen. But it hasn't happened yet. So we have to get to 60 as soon as possible if we want the possibility to having more people. Makes sense. And it is really only two months away. So, yeah. you know, people can start planning now. 
sooner the better, obviously. And, and we realized by having this up like, you know, a month ago, that would have helped you have a three month window. But anyways, I just wanted to let everybody know that currently space is limited. Okay. To 60 people. Well, that'll be interesting because that means we don't have a table to set up, up shop for us or the computer. Well, that is including... I guess we could use a snack uh, one. ...being set up in the back and putting the, the prizes and stuff in the back. So, yes, we oh, might okay. have to come up with some ideas. I have a I have a table that... I don't know if it's a good enough table to hold two Blood Bowl games on it, but we could set up for sure like our... You know, our computer and stuff like that at a table if need to be. So, well, we'll figure it, it out. It, the store has changed. It really has. And like I said, there's. And there's also, more like, how many people do we have? issues in our store than ever before if you're in a comic guy. Like, how many people do we have in the local league now, though? We have 22 people Jeez. with a 23rd joining next month in our local league. Now, I'm telling everybody right now, including my local guys. Most of the time, all your locals do not show up. Of course. But here's, here is the dilemma for current state of Oklahoma Blood Bowl. There is a league down in Lawton, which is an hour and a half away from Oklahoma City, that is thriving as well, who have been coming to events. So we are, I can proudly say, we are getting more and more Oklahoma people at our own Oklahoma events than ever. Yeah. So Not to mention that the DFW good, people, too. So that is a really, really, really good thing and a good problem to have. But it wouldn't shock me this year if you said uh, there's 60 people here for Oklahoma Bowl and there's 24 people here from the state of Oklahoma for the first time. I'd Jeez. be like, yeah, I can see that. Okay. So, so that being anyways. said, register early. If we hit 60 with a month to go, and we somehow outgrow the space. I mean, we could possibly find some other way to do it, or maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I we'll, would. To... We'll, we'll look into it, but we'll try to accommodate as many people as we can. Yeah, let, let's turn down a bunch of people before we go there. But, <laughs> yeah, yes, it is definitely possible. Um, so, yeah, you put this Oklahoma Bowl rule set all in one snazzy docum- document. And this comes from, uh, you use the World Cup rules for Critter Bowl. And Correct. a lot of people are wanting to test it, so you decided to use it for Oklahoma Bowl as well. And I figured, why not? So it's also being used for Spiky. It's just Spiky gets added on top of that. So the main oh. team creation being the 11th event this year is dedicated to Nuffle. What better way to celebrate than by preparing ourselves for the world's largest celebration of Nuffle ever, the 2024 World Cup. In honor of this event, the team creation rules are using the same template as the WC. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? In the World Cup this year? Why did I put 2024? Because you want to have a World Cup event. Oh. No, I'm on thinking even numbers. Uh, yeah, I do because of the the soccer one. Yep. I will have to get that updated. Yeah, 2023. Oh. <laughs> okay, I was just I was making sure. I was like, oh crap. <laughs> No, um, yeah, that's that's uh, what happens when we just take for granted stuff. Okay. Uh, so the following is the base team building rules, then any special rules for each event we found later in the document, blah, blah, blah. It's basically the World Cup rules. If you want to go over the you can. World Cup guys have to turn in your rosters? So it just got extended. It was going to be May 1st, I believe, but now we don't have to finalize the rosters until I think July 15th. Okay, so this is... So, this is huge. One of the events yeah. that you can come and here's here's the deal, folks. If you're going to World Cup, maybe you're going to take Undead, mm-hmm. and you have two different rosters you're to- toying with. You can play one in Oklahoma. You can play one at Spiky. There's not much difference. I mean, obviously the builds are the same yeah. this year to keep it simple, or you could play with the same build to start getting used to that team. Yeah, so. and you'll be playing against people that have the same build as you'd see in World Cup. Um. So I don't think we really need to go over the World Cup rules. If you are interested, obviously, you can look at the World Cup, or you can look at our rule package, either way. Uh, it is separated into tiers. It has special inducements. If you need to, if you want to take a star player, there are cert- certain ones that are just going to take away all your skills, pretty much. Um, yeah, can we go over that part really quick? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 
so these are the rule sets that we did use for Critter Bowl for those people who came. But if I take Morgenthorg, he costs me three primary skills. So I'm just using this as an example. I take a tier five team of halflings with three primary skills and uh, one access to a star. Yeah. I take Morg. So really I'm getting Morg and only three primary skills. Is that correct? Yeah. So the best example is probably why this is created. Dwarves. Dwarves, tier one, they have an option. F- if they want to take a star player, they have to ha- they get three primary skills and access to one star player. Since mm-hmm. Morg and Griff both cost three primary skills. If you're a dwarf team and you want to crutch Griff, you're not getting any other skills. Because the three that you got are taken by the star, and that's it. And that's pretty much him and, I would say, Lord Borak are the main stars that they're trying to keep people from taking. Borak? Well, talking about Griff sorry, and... Borak for the other rule. Um, oh, okay, okay. Because of the bribes. No bribes allowed if your team has one or more players with a sneaky get skill. Okay, I got you. Um, but yeah, who's not on the list? Vorag. Who do I not want to see? Vorag. <laughs> well, I, I mean, like, like this, this shows you, <laughs> the, the star player list shows you like what the World Cup Committee deems as like really powerful stars here. Yeah. Morgan Tech costs three of your primaries. Uh, Griff, three of your primaries. Deep Root, Hack Flim, Creek, uh, Gauss, Russ Rust Gouger. Gouger, and Bomber all take two of your primary star player points or skills. And then Wilhelm at one. I'm shocked to see him, but me and Wilhelm, I hate that guy. He's, yeah, he's I'm bad. sure there's a reason for it. I just don't know what it is. Well, because he plays like shit every time I play <laughs> with him, so whatever. Um, Oklahoma Bowl, um, our registrations, if you've been before, obviously we start at 8 a.m. It is early, but that way we're not going into the deep, dark hours of night being yeah, done. You will not eat dinner at 9 o'clock at night. I yeah, can guarantee you Or that. midnight. Right, um, or something like that. Yeah, we finish. It's four rounds, but we finish 6.45, 7. We do run a tight ship, so... There's not too much of a problem there. Uh, we do have the Oklahoma Bowl weather table. So there's no change there. Yeah, so there's no orcs. There's no orcs from the wizards in the storyline of Oklahoma Bowl that pulled you know past stars into the present. No there's crom. no old versions of them coming back. There's no crom. It is just, it's no green star players like before where orcs could play with anybody the only thing I'm doing different with the World Cup rules is the weather table is the normal Oklahoma Bowl weather table. Which so is fine. It, I'm sure a lot of people are not fans, but that's fine. No, I understand. I'm just saying with, with the Orcs winning it last year and the Goblins winning Spiky, it was in with the World Cup, and I know there's a mm-hmm. lot of people from Texas and you and Drew and other people who really wanted to play test teams. It's hard as it it was really hard for me to like budge on this, but I thought let's just try this out. And we got really good feedback on like Critter Bowl. Like people didn't feel like, oh God, I played Griffin Dwarves again, yeah. Griffin Dwarves again, or you know, whatever craziness. It, we just felt like maybe this, maybe they've kind of solved the solution on how to keep these stars from like wrecking everybody. I don't know because we we know the current version of Blood Bowl is very star heavy. That's for oh sure. yeah. Um, so again, Spiky Cup, same thing. Registration starts at eight a.m. Get done with this one about four fifteen, four thirty. Faster. It's only three rounds. Um, this again, the base creation is the same same rules it's just there are additional team building rules uh, okay. e- each non-goblin team will be given one free bribe this is in addition to the three you can normally buy each goblin team will be given two free bribes maximum four bribes may be received two bought and two free and finally any team with a player with sneaky git will not receive any free bribes but again it's the same base as the everything else 
it's still the same fun uh, scoring four points for a casualty, two points for a knockout, blah, blah, blah. And n- th- there's no wacky kickoff table, keeping that regular just for practice pre- reasons as well. Uh, but there is the gifts of Nuffle that we have. After many years of devotion to Nuffle, he's decided to grace all teams with a special boon taken from the previous tournaments of Spiky Cup. You may choose one of the following gifts of Nuffle to include with your roster. Uh, do you want me to run through them real quick? If you want to. Okay. Um, and again, these are all based on different tournaments that we've had. We've had 10. There are 10 choices. So, one player of your choice, not a star, has brought out their hooligan kit. They gain sneaky get, dirty player, plus one, stab, and multi-block. In addition to the skills, they have also threatened the ref. Any ones rolled for argue the call or secret weapon can be re-rolled once. And this option will mean your team may not have any bribes. Uh, DK Swiss Sponsorship. Player of your choice, not a star, gets Disturbing Presence, Tentacles, Shadowing, Claws, Prehensile Tail, Monstrous Mouth, and Fend. Uh, the third one is St. Louis Ham Mobile. Five, three, four plus, um, no passing ability, then ten plus for armor. Has Loner 3+, plus, No Hands, Juggernaut, Leader, Secret Weapon, and Delicious, which provides Disturbing Presence, Foul Appearance, and Hypnotic Gaze. And then for 100k, you can remove the Secret Weapon. Wow. Yeah, that was for the... Uh, Man, I, I, I apologize. At the beginning of this, I said, if you wanted to practice your World Cup team <laughs> for two straight tournaments, I was really wrong because I've missed some of these things. <laughs> there wow. I mean you can. It just depends on what you take. Okay. It's your choice. <laughs> um favorite of Crom. Gain one keg and all casualties for your team get replaced by a by Crom sponsored beer bore. These players will be put into your end zone in the square of your choice. So if you do that, do bring some markers or figures or beer bores if you have a bunch. Um I just want to see like 10 beer boys on the pitch running around. Wow. Wow. Uh, so the fifth option is one random, not a star player gets a fancy hat. Uh, then the sixth option, which was from Swiky Cup 5.5, Jordell's sponsorship. Player of your choice, not a star, gets leap, very long legs, sidestep, sure hands, dodge, and oh so pretty, which is foul appearance. Jesus, dude. <laughs> Well, you, these... I should have read over these rules because I would have told you all this stuff is too weird. It is weird. I you're not... ki- you're killing me already. Now other people right now are like their mouth is watering. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, I can't wait for Spiky Cup, and I'm going. I'll just run this one. You can play this one, Steve. I'll play it. Or Those, <laughs> that's the two responses we get, and that's why we have the two tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, just just fluff wise, I yeah. want to tell everybody. Um, as people probably don't know, Oklahoma Bowl started off as a one-day, one-event tournament. The second year is where we did Spiky Cup. It was an experiment to do two tournaments in two days, and we just thought we would try it once. And then people liked it, so we kept it going. So at one point, it was like, it's Oklahoma Bowl 4 and Spiky Cup 3. Mm-hmm. And then we got to a point where we got dice for Spiky Cup 5, and, they mess and up. <laughs> uh, Oklahoma Bowl 6, and there was an error in the process where we had a bunch of extra dice with the, the wrong colors, wrong symbols, everything else. Just so, colors. The symbols are fine. Well, the symbols were the same fives, but they were the wrong colors and stuff that yeah. we ordered. So in Goblin Logic, we came up with the fluff that the goblins were mad that the orcs thought they were better than them, right? Because they were all those orcs think they're so smart because they have us the sixth Oklahoma Bowl. Well, we have a five one. You know what's better than a five? Two fives. And that's <laughs> where we came up with the idea of five point five. Right. And we used those extra dice that were the wrong color. And we ran that midsummer. So it was a separate tournament unto itself, which really is in place of six and that caught us up so when it became oklahoma bowl weekend seven we had the tournaments with the same numbers yeah so there you go there's kind of a recap on like how we got to this point in case anybody out there really gives a crap (laughs) 
Uh, so that brings us to number seven, which is when we introduced the uh, Goblin All-Stars. And we got the Goblin Cannonball. So he, he gets added to your team. He's six, two, four plus, no passing, nine plus. Loner, three plus, no hands, dodge, stunty, thick skull, really right stuff. So anyone with more strength than him on his team can throw him. And Cannonball. Does not make a landing roll. Always lands prone with no armor roll, even if he hits someone. Anyone he hits has a plus one to their armor. So he really is just being thrown around the pitch. Man, golly. <laughs> See, I don't want to run this thing and let you play because you're going to have a million questions. Oh, I know I will. And that, Answer. I appreciate any questions you get beforehand. And these rules may change between now and the time we start, but I will let people know. Uh, eight. Favored of the big deal. This is the year that we had the big deal. Gain two cheerleaders, two consistent coaches, two kegs, and all rolls to argue the call succeed on a five plus. Rolling a one does not get any coach thrown out. If you roll a one on an argue the call, you roll a d6. On a six, you will throw a keg at the ref. Roll a d6, and on six, it hits. Roll a d3, the ref is knocked out for that many turns. <laughs> During that time, no fouls will be caught and no secret weapons will be thrown out. If the drive ends, the ref is fine at the next kickoff. Okay. Um, nine, friends of Nuffle Assistant, the FN Drummer. Add plus two to all crowd injuries and all KO recoveries on a two plus. And, oh, sorry. And all KOs recover on a two plus. After your team causes two casualties or four KOs, the crowd will add plus three to opponent injury rolls, and your KOs can re-roll once if they roll a one per player um, of the team, Jesus not the Christ, coach. Dude. Uh, the oh, the original crowd. effects stay in effect for the other team. Okay, just the crowd will add three to the yeah. injury roll. Yeah, how often do the crowds go? But if you're taking a uh, if you're taking a freaking chaos team, or not chaos, but um, corn, corn, maybe you want to take it. Uh, plus, it's, you know, it's Brian. So, uh, And then yeah. 10, Valation Carnation's Pitch. He's one of the other Goblin star All-Stars. Valation hates a messy pitch. His pitch is meticulously cleaned, even during the game. And it makes it very hard to get your bearings. All prone players must make a D6 roll to stand. On a 1, they stay prone. This cannot happen two times in a row for the same player. Does not apply to anyone with strength 5+. In addition, all rushes get a minus one to the dice roll. And for 100,000, you can purchase Carnation brand cleats that remove that penalty to your team. Why would you take that? I don't know. I, had to, I came up with the ten options. No one has to take all of them. Five is someone gets a fancy hat. Well, that's cool. I mean, uh, it's a fancy hat. It's like, it could be like a sailor hat. Like, I mean, it could I be. You've got a fancy hat. You've I don't expect everyone to take all these. I want to see who takes what. I, I did one from every previous one we did. So, and I fully expect people to hate them or to love them or tell me it's broken or whatever. That's fine. This is what it is. If you don't like it, play Oracle Homeable. Oh, okay. I okay. I, I see number ten now. I mean, number ten is you could buy this. It works against both teams, and then you could buy your cleats, mm -hmm. and it doesn't affect you. Okay. I mean, man. Man. Yeah. I did not read through these, and um, <laughs> it's definitely showing right now. My response is like, <laughs> here's, here's what I thought we were going into. <laughs> so, uh, full disclosure, folks, I didn't read over these until... Just now. About... About 30 minutes before, and I just kind of looked at the team building. I did not realize, Steve, I, I didn't know you had this additional team building rules for Spikey only. Yeah, you thought it was a kickoff table. I just thought it was the like a kickoff table thing that was inspired by that. Man, so it's wow, that's a lot. Um, it's going to be fun to check these rosters. Anyways, that's fine. That's <laughs> This is how Spikey is. Well, the good thing is, I mean, it's not that hard. It's just... Take what you take. Now, it's going to be a pain for people to remember, maybe, but have print-offs of this. I'll try to print off some of this and have it there for people. Um, and again, I don't think everyone's going to... I don't think every single one's going to be taken. I really don't. 
Maybe they will. If we get enough people, someone's probably going to find a use for them. But that's what I wanted. I wanted them to be different enough that someone might make some weird type of, like, the valation thing. Seems very odd, but maybe someone can figure out some way to exploit it. No, I, I got you. I, it's fine. It's. I really thought you were calming down on, like, the craziness of Spikey, and then <laughs> I should have known better. I, I, because... I was tempted, but I can't. I was like, it's really weird that a spiky cup's not going to have like, you know, 10 people with, or 10 skills on people and stuff like that. Yeah. And it is. So that it's fine. It is what it is, man. For sure. I'm not knocking it. There's lots of people who love some fucking spiky cup for this reason. Alone. Gotta share the love. So, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I totally get that. It was fun to go back and look at the old, um, all the old rules and try to figure out one from each one though. And then try to make them somewhat balanced. Like I said, obviously these are not balanced well to each other, but I tried to make them somewhat. No, I got you. And I I really want someone to take favorite of Krom and just have a crap ton of like, they just fill up with 16 goblins, take that and just fill up with 16 boars at some point. I mean, Sadly, that is going to be funny, and you know when it does happen because it will. Well, the thing too, I not that I've talked to many people about this, but according to that, if you casually a boar, another boar pops up. So you should never get pitch cleared, is what you're saying. Also, infinite number of points for your opponent. Mm. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. Okay. Uh, but we'll still have all the regular uh, awards, tiebreakers, all that fun stuff. I did not read your what I thought was a kickoff table, though. <laughs> and those are pretty outlandish and in the theme of Spiky Cup. So, uh, wow. Got choices to make, folks. Yep. Say sp- I had an idea. I'm not going to say what it is because maybe I'll do it next year. Yeah, don't but tell us. I had an idea that would take a lot more time. So I will hopefully do it next year. All good, my friend. So, uh, but yeah, so, and 100% disclaimer, if you take a fancy hat, you're getting what you get. Hmm. Whatever that that is, that you might just give me a fancy hat and it does nothing to do with the game. Wow. That's tempting. Don't know. Maybe Hmm. I do. Maybe I don't. Hmm. It is 100% up to me between now and then, because I don't know what it is. Um, Um, I w- yeah, I wouldn't take that. Although, <laughs> all I had to do is go, Michael Lewis, <laughs> you need to take the fancy hat. And right now, he's listening, and he's really smiling, and he's like, dang it, I'm taking the fancy hat, because Scott called me out on this. It's possible. And then and then I'm going to say, Drew Bucciacone, you need to take the fancy hat. And he's <laughs> listening, and he's going, there's no way in hell I'm taking a fancy hat. He would immediately just turn off the podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's it's off right now. He didn't even hear me finish all that. So, um, so all right. So overall, folks. it should be a lot of fun. Um, this is going to be an interesting one for us because I'll have to fly in the day before, uh, get everything set up. Um, please register as early as possible so that we can possibly hit that sixty mark as soon as possible to see what we can do to go past it. So, Steve, uh, one of the bigger things I've heard from everybody is, are we going to get fields this year? They are in process. Um, Okay, so it is in process. Yeah, and it is going to be through Jack Maelstrom. So, um, Maelstrom is a great company. They always do amazing stuff. He's currently working on it. He says we'll have them done by then. Um, Once he finishes it and I'm able to get a picture and I can show it to people, then we can open up sales, and we'll figure out some way of doing it. Uh, Either you pay Jack directly, or you pay us, or uh, if we, for some reason, don't have enough time, he can just send us a crap ton, and we'll sell him and send him the money. I don't know. But we'll get it figured out. 
but it is in the process because yes i've heard that like more common lately than ever like people go like yeah hey, or, because the new i movies. might not be able to come to the event but are y'all gonna be having fields yeah <laughs> or I, i'm gonna come to the event if you have a field because um, i want one yeah. i'm really hoping that we can keep it in perpetuity as well so we can have it stay on Jack's website, and if he sells them, then you know we can put it towards future stuff with us or whatever, something like that. Okay. But we just got to finish up with him, see what he says, and if the d- he's shown me some other stuff that he's been doing, which is amazing. Um, and then if he, if this comes out the way that I think it's going to, it's going to be really cool. So I'm really hoping it does well. Cool. But no news yet. Well, I don't know what else to say except sign up soon because we we might have a seating problem. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, I, I can't I can't control the store. I, no, of course I'm not. Lucky, I'm lucky I have a key and everything else. And yes, we have gotten more than sixty people in there before. I'm glad I counted the tables because the original conversation was is like I wouldn't have thought you have, of it. Like, you know, one time. It, you know, and I was like, well, I don't want to say we can have 70 unless I can see we can have 70. So, but anyways, let's uh, pack pack the store this time. Or if we don't, we know that maybe we move to the wrong area of the year to run this tournament if 20 people show up. Yeah. But I doubt that happens. So. If it does, uh, we're in big trouble, but we'll figure it out. I always still get to see you, though, buddy. That is true. It'll be nice to get back All there. Right. Well, I don't have anything else to say except, wow, look at this spiky stuff in detail. <laughs> okay. And Michael Lewis is going to get a fancy hat. He probably will, yeah. <laughs> okay, we will be back I, I, shortly. I'll talk to you later. It's the end of the podcast, so if you know anything, then you know what that means. It's time for shout-outs. It is indeed time for... Shout outs. Shout outs. Okay. I will gladly take that. Um, we don't have a whole lot right now because. Um, Shout outs! There we go. Oh, I could always hope. But um, Milan did write in to see how we were doing and say that he missed us at Adepticon. Uh, so I want to shout out to him. Time Milan, we love you. Uh, we had other people who went to Adepticon and were hoping to see us. And again, um, didn't work out in the cards this year. Maybe next year. We're hopeful. Uh, just going to depend, like if we move Oklahoma back to March or uh, we don't know. Um, no, we don't. We don't know anything. We don't know anything. It's just life is life. We take it as it comes. As Did always, I... we want to give a shout out to GW for being nice enough to send us the preview copies of stuff. Yeah, uh, we uh, appreciate that fully. Um, even if we. Even if I like models with two feet on the ground, I'm really happy that you did that. Did I ever talk to you about the person at my job at the academy, the air traffic academy coming up to me, recognizing my voice from this podcast? I do not believe so, no. So therefore, I want to shout out the gentleman who came up to me at the air traffic school who recognized my voice and ask like, do you do a Blood Bowl podcast? And you know that that type of thing. So um, what? this was some time ago. So like, he's probably already through it all and maybe listening again. But yes, yes, it was really nice of you to come up and say something. So, so he came to it, Oklahoma for the training. I believe so. Yes, we didn't have a lot of time to talk because he had class and I had to go huh. do some run some stuff. How does as he well. not write but, in like, and tell us about this? How do you not bring this up? I thought I already told people, but I no, mean, that's crazy. I'm kind of at the age or just a moron where like I tell people things and therefore I think I've already told everybody. Yeah. Like this is the one that thing happens. like Jen gets really upset with. Like she'll go, no, you didn't tell me that. And I was like, of course I told you that you're my best friend. And mm-hmm. I talk to you all the time about everything. And she's like, no, you talk to Gary about that. <laughs> and you talk to this guy about it, but you probably forgot because by the time it got to me, we talked about other things. And I'm like, Oh yeah. Because you, you start telling the same story five times to five different people. You start thinking, I don't want to repeat myself. And obviously everyone knows this by now. And yeah, right. Exactly. 
So really cool. yes, I I really thought I brought this up on here. So I just remembered it tonight as we recorded, and I thought I don't know if I actually did say anything. So to the gentleman who approached me at my job and recognized my lovely voice, please write in and shout, let us know. Shout outs to you. Um, I'd also like to give a remember shout the, out before to, you do that. Remember the first time we got recognized by your voice? Um, was it by Kent Raffrey? Yeah, at. Uh, Chaos Cup? Yeah. Not Jordan. Yeah. Luminati's. First time we went Luminati's. there. Luminati's. Yeah, he comes over. He's like, are you? Are you from the number one Blood Bowl podcast? We're like, yes, we are, sir. <laughs> we're celebrities. We made it. Yeah, we're, we're big time. Um, I would like to give a shout out to Mr. Ben Burns in our local league, who called me out when I made fun of his league name for the PC League. And I think it was like the... Torrent grad torrents or something like that. And he told me I should do my research before <laughs> I say anything about a team name because he looked it all up and it is um it's gotta be both down approved based on like kind of most of my criteria, whether I love it or not. So uh <laughs> I found it funny today that he called me out on that. So uh it was cool. That's good. So there you go, Ben. Shout out to you. Shout out. <laughs> because you were right and I was wrong, and I know we live in a world where people don't admit that. So yeah. Um, and again, shout out to all the guys that played at the tournament. It was great meeting everyone, hanging out. Um, hopefully, I I think one of them said I think it's Kyle who said he'd probably start listening. Not positive. They said they were talking well, about yeah. it during the. Well, of course, they're going to say that they don't have to listen. They got their free miniature from you now. Already. Well, of course, so, yeah. Like, I mean, they um, don't have to do that. I, I wish I could listen to more podcasts. Like, don't get me wrong. Freaking love my job. It's amazing. Um, but I do kind of miss the days where I just sat and didn't do much and could just listen to a ton of podcasts. Because I felt I love connected. my job, too. And I have a lot of extra time to read, which I guess I should be sitting there listening to podcasts. No. But I miss the days where I could, like, work and listen to something. Mm-hmm. I I do get what you're saying. Because I, I miss that at times, too. I, I wish that at least you know one day a week I just had to listen to the radio while I'm working. And you know for four hours, I could listen to podcasts and stay caught up on everything. Yeah. So. I had a job one time that was, it was a temp job, and it was sorting mail. And the mail got there at like 5.30 in the morning, so I had to be there at 5 or whatever. And we get so- sorting the mail, and... We basically sorted into, you know, we had eight people, whatever it was, and each person gets a certain amount. You go back to your desk and you uh, open it, unfold it, remove staples, get it ready for scanning and processing and all that. And there was no computer. There was no phone. You couldn't listen to anything on your phone. We just had a radio. And it was like, I get done with my work in about two, two and a half hours. And the rest of the day was just sitting there listening to the radio. It was, oh, wow. It was mind-numbingly boring. But it was kind of nice because it was really relaxing. And I was like one of the few guys there. So I could actually like go hide out in the bathroom for a few hours. And not have to do anything and take a nap. So it was fun. Well, I think we're kind of rambling because it's late at night. Well, of course we do. Uh, any more shout-outs on your end? Uh, I, I would just say shout-out to everybody in the both leagues that I'm currently playing. Anyone who I have been streaming. I've been trying to get all those games in. So anyone who's come to the stream and watched, I really do appreciate it. If I didn't mention it, I am an affiliate, or we technically, since it's the Both Down account. And you're, of course, welcome to stream on there anytime. Um We'll yeah, I mean, we talk, We really <laughs> actually talked about me streaming occasionally when yeah. I do have a game. I haven't got on Blood Bowl unless I've had a game to play, really. Oh, yeah. So um, I just don't go in there. I don't want to. I got to be honest. I don't want to play just randos. I just rather play people I know right now. Yeah. Or at I, least people in my league. I do want to start a new team and probably start, you know, re- doing a stream once a week at least just to have me doing something. Um, 
probably Monday through Thursday, one of those days. I'm not sure when. Is people still having a, a tough time getting people to stick around and play their games? Some people are. I'm not sure. Because I that... haven't played lately. Okay. When they did the curious. reset of the, the ladder, I kind of stopped playing because the team I kept playing was now dead. Oh, that's what happened? Well, Every they... team in the ladder got reset? Yeah, they reset it a while back. So, oh, I, like, I, until then, I was playing pretty consistently, One of you know, not every night, but a game every other night or so. But since then, I just haven't had the dedication because I have to restart my team. And, of course, I'm at the point where I'm like, do I just go through and delete every team I had? Do I want to write down the names because I like the names of the teams? Or does it not matter? Like, this is the stupid thing about our brain, or at least my brain, is I created these teams... I want to have a record that they existed, but there's really no reason for me to have a record they existed because I don't give a crap about BB2 teams. But, I don't know. Hmm. Just being dumb. Okay. Um, I'm sure I have some more shout-outs, but I honestly don't know at this point. I'm just uh, dragging the podcast out. So, okay. I'm going to say I have no more shout-outs. And um, I... Excited to see everybody here in a few months and have an excuse to get together with, uh, you know, 60 to 80 of my closest gaming friends that. Oh, okay, here we go. Know. I knew there was something. It was actually Milan. Sorry, oh. my bad. Because um, I already replied to him. And so I didn't have it in the new. I'm like, I know. I, I was wondering why you didn't read that. I was thinking like it was a good letter. And I was like, yeah. is there a reason he's not reading this? Well, because I, I actually replied to him. Normally I keep it not replied to until the podcast. So I don't confuse it. Okay. Well, I didn't want to overstep my bounds and you go like later, like, dude, you shouldn't have brought that up. Or like <laughs> we edited out. No, uh, he definitely wanted us to give a shout out to the Philippine Blood Bowl League. Uh, it's his crew back home. So obviously we're happy to do so. And let's see. I've got to pull up the file. So he sent in his teams for you to approve. Did you see that? I did. I and don't remember them because I have read, I did read the email, but keep yeah. going. Yeah, it's the Knight, Knightswood Night Stalkers. I mean, it fits it. That's it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so um, he does say the players are named after some of the most active guys in our Philippine Blood Bowl League, and Knightswood is a gamer tag username of one of them. Correct. I, I so, remember that. It it fits. And it, it that's it's not saying approved. Close. Like it's it's <laughs> what's that? That's not saying approved. You're just using a different word. <laughs> I'm saying I'm not in love with the name because it is personal to him. And I I had this conversation like just two days ago with somebody else who we were discussing this. And like it's kind of like how I love my Pox Hollow Blight Crusaders, which is a play off the Bright Crusaders from second edition. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with that because I came up with it. It it, it works. And it's personal you to him. And yes, by the law that. of the land, I guess it is both down approved. There we is go. Is it my favorite name? No, no but at the same asking. time, it works. No one's asking if it's your favorite. They just want to know if it's approved. Since you're the. I know, but I feel pressure anymore because I think people really <laughs> want me to get like. Like, get an erection and get really excited by their team name and go, I'm going to steal this because I love it so much. I mean, I don't think anyone else has stolen the site for Sorai. Well, that is a terrible, non both that approved name. I think you should listen to Milan on just an idiot. his team it's names. A, one of the greatest names ever. It's it's terrible. Oh, I forgot. That's another thing. Shout out to everyone who put up with us fumbling the last episode when it came to Apple. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean. We still don't really know what the issue was, but we got it fixed. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, we um, it took many, many, many days with many different eyes. And we, uh, anyways, long story short, we got it fixed. So uh, thank you for your patience. Oh, I think I forgot to turn back on that uh, thing on the website. 
Well, if it's working, don't do it. Whatever it is. I might anyways. <laughs> anyways, yeah. yeah. So as of right now, uh, hopefully you're getting this the same day we publish it on iTunes. That'll be a, an improvement. Yeah. That's okay. cool. Well, I think that's all I got. That's all you got. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I, I, since we already went back on this <laughs> and we keep uh, dragging this out, I was really touched that Milan took his time to actually write a really big, long email and talk about missing his buddies. And that is what you get if you're out there listening and you don't come to tournaments. Once you come to a tournament, you're going to get that feeling like this is a super community and there's a lot of nice people here. Yeah. And you get, you understand what we talk about when we say a lot of times these are just excuses to get together is blood bowl. And I will say, I even mentioned him this weekend at the tournament because, uh, one of the guys, a couple of them went to chaos cup and, um, another guy mentioned that he went, he was going to Thailand and me being a racist American. I was like, Oh, I know someone from Thailand. I'm like, wait, <laughs> no, I don't. Damn it. It's the Philippines. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, at least I admit it, right? I mean, yeah, if, if there's one of us that's racist, it's definitely <laughs> you. So it's, I do it's hate good. halflings. <laughs> you, you do. And dwarves. So. Anything short. So maybe I'm just Randy Newman. Short people got no reason. You could be. All right. I'm going to let this uh, wrap up and enjoy the rest of my Sunday having anxiety about the same job I've worked at for five years tomorrow morning. God, has you know, it been where five I don't years? Sleep tonight. Huh? Has it been five years? It has been five years. Jeez. Isn't that crazy? Well, I'm but, thankful but to that's have... what I do every Sunday is, yeah. uh, you know, I stay up and contemplate everything. I like, Remember that time in junior high? It's Man. only Sundays. It's really weird. Well, um, I'm just going to go to bed because it's late. All right. Well, so I'll talk to see, you guys next time. Take month. care. Yeah. And enjoy Ohio. Ohio. And your JoJo's. Is that what they're called? JoJo's? They're called JoJo's. I tried them. They're just potato oh. wedges. I don't get it. <laughs> All right. Enjoy your JoJo's, everybody. We'll see you next time. You can follow Both Down on Twitter at Both Down. You can follow Scott at Real Scott Prime. And Steve at Kilowog2814. If you'd like to email them, the email address is bothdownpodcasts at gmail.com. Or for more information, you can visit them at bothdown.com or at facebook.com forward slash Both Down. Welcome back, Showtime Pizza Report. I am your host, Chris. I am happy to be here. I am happy you are here, and I hope you're having a great day. Today, Showtime Pizza Report, we are at Leonardo's. This is JoJo's. We're going to put these down to the end. Leonardo's there. Yeah, a little accident with the JoJo's on the box, a little grease, but that's okay, because grease is usually good when it comes to deep fried foods and pizza. Right now we're gonna try these JoJo's. These are obviously deep fried. A little accent with the bag, I guess. All right, these things are huge, huge JoJo's. Let's try these. They got probably half a dozen in here, maybe. Try this one, Showtime. Hot, very hot on the inside. These actually have some taste to them, unlike Fiesta's. Definitely like these ones better. You know who else got good uh, JoJo's? is Gene Nino's. That's the place for JoJo's. Today on Showtime Pizza Report, I'll give these JoJo's an 8.9. 8.9. Good stuff. I'm pretty sure they have chicken there. So check them out. Leonardo's. Can't forget this, huh? So there you go. That's the pizza report. Showtime.